What's going on YouTube? Dustin Yubi here back with another video and in today's video um, I'm actually going to talk about what's wrong with EA Sports NHL the series. Uh, so I recently had a great question uh, on my NHL 23 news video. This comment was from No Slip Ups and they said let me ask you something. So how frustrating is it to work at EA or be a game changer and constantly put out a lackluster product because EA has been trashed since NHL 14? How much influence do you as an employee or a game changer really have like i think that would be a really interesting video along with it which okay let's do it so this is a really good question and i'm gonna kind of break it down into like a short video essay i'm gonna try and make it short i, re I, re I recorded this already and it was like 50 minutes after editing it so i'm gonna try and redo this um basically it kind of stems down to three things so uh we're gonna talk ho hockey as a sport uh the second thing is like just a general rundown of how game development works and then the third one is just like the EA NHL community. Um, and then we'll kind of just do a conclusion. Yeah. So it's going to be like your standard essay format. If you guys enjoyed today's video and you want to support the channel, please leave a like. If you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button. Uh, it helps out. It's free. And uh, yeah, I'll be bringing more NHL content. I make lots of NHL 22 stuff right now and uh, continue to do so hopefully into the next game along with some news and stuff so you guys want to check it out also this video is sponsored by manscapes so we're gonna hop into that really quickly and then uh, yeah we'll jump into the rest of the video today's video is brought to you by manscaped who is the best in men's below the waist grooming manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels <sighs> wow that rhymes manscaped recently launched the ultimate men's hygiene bundle the performance package look at this baby your balls will thank you Big thanks to Manscaped for hooking me up. Look, at it. it's even got a little, a little surprise drawer in there. There's so many goodies in there. Holy moly. You can join over 5 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. And also get 20% off and free worldwide shipping when you use the code YUI at Manscaped.com. That's Y-E-W-Y, baby. Let's go. The Performance Package 4.0 by Manscaped has arrived, and oh man, it's a game changer. Inside, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, and you also get a Magic Mat for disposing your shavings. And also, free gifts, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a beautiful travel bag to hold all your goodies. Woo-wee! Performance Package 4.0 by manscaped she's a beauty the lawnmower 4.0 is the future of grooming and possibly the greatest ball trimmer ever the design is actually really sick uh it's got some nice angles on there so it like fits really comfortable in your hand Ooh. it features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to the advanced skin safe technology the lawnmower 4.0 is also waterproof and has a 400k led spotlight so you can see what you're doing look at this thing it's got as much light as my drill Holy man. And it's incredible for telling ghost stories around the campfire. You're gonna love my nuts. We also have the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer. The Weed Whacker is also waterproof and provides proprietary skin safe technology which helps reduce nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate nose holes. Oh yeah. Ooh. The Performance Package 4.0 is actually super sick. Big thanks again to Manscaped for sending me one of those. Uh, it really gets the job done. And you can get 20% off and free shipping worldwide with code UE at manscaped.com. That's right. 20% off plus free shipping worldwide. It's insane. Just use code UE and make sure you get the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Let's get back to the video. All right. So some of this is going to kind of tie in later on as I get into kind of like the general game development. Okay. So let's hop into the first section, which is hockey as a sport. Um, a lot of this will kind of interweave. So we have like three sections. But they're going to kind of like... They'll, they'll all kind of make sense together at the end um, once we get into everything. So hockey as a sport in general, um, and the first thing I kind of want to look at is like ease of entry. Uh, so generally, if you look at something like a FIFA or a Madden, so we're talking soccer or, you know, football in the UK, or if you're talking football in America, um, those sports have a relatively very uh, low entry. I mean, soccer is literally cheap, cheap, cheap. You need a ball. And you need your feet <laughs> um obviously you can get it can get even better than that you can get cleats you can get shin pads and socks and but that bare minimum is a very low entry into the sport and essentially you could make like some so there's like third world countries where people make balls and they play soccer um because that's all they have right so um that's that that's generally why soccer is such a worldwide sport because it's so easy to play 
Uh, if you look at football, it's a little bit, like a little bit different. You need a football, you know, to throw. Um, but generally, that that sport can be played all over the place. That's why it's so big in the U.S., right? It can be played at like lunchtime or like recess, you know, like in school, um, where you you don't have to have like tackle, right? You can play one or two hand touch. There's flag football. There's different levels of football that you can play. Uh, but generally, it's not like too crazy to get into. Like there's some equipment needed, but it's not insane. Um, and just like getting into it as a kid isn't like crazy expensive to do okay so we got soccer which is a very low entry level uh football is kind of up there it's not quite as cheap but it's still up there and then you look at hockey now hockey you need skates a stick gloves a helmet bare minimum four things i mean you don't need a helmet if you don't want to be safe uh you don't need gloves you could use like winter mitts really um there's also things like like street hockey or like floor hockey where you literally just need a stick if anything obviously you'd probably want to wear gloves so you don't get sticked in the in the hands or anything uh but like those those are pretty low entry level and like i know people who play those and have only played those only and that's how they've kind of gotten into the sport um but if you really want to like get into hockey you need at least those four items if you want to play hockey you need a lot more equipment which is very expensive ice time is expensive um and then if you don't like if you don't have a rink and you don't live somewhere where it's like cold enough i mean that's kind of a barrier as well i mean obviously there is there's roller hockey and that can be played in most conditions as long as you have a flat surface but uh and same thing with street hockey but relatively i wouldn't say it's a very cheap sport to get into which kind of like lowers the fandom in general people who play a sport are more likely to watch a sport and be interested in it um and obviously like i said i know people who are hockey fans maybe they, they've never played hockey uh, but they've maybe played street hockey or like, you know, some type of hockey. And then I think there are people who don't like play hockey and have been, you know, diehard hockey fans for whatever reason. And that's, that's completely different. Um, no knock to those people. Like, that's awesome. But I feel like a lot of people who are fans of hockey have played hockey or coached hockey or been involved with hockey uh, at some sort of level. And then they kind of become, you know, uh, you're just generally a fan of the NHL and like, you know or wherever you live right it could be uh you know your your league sort of say like why well, i live in winnipeg the jets left when i was young we had the uh the ahl manitoba moose that's what i watched but i also took over red wings as my my team right so um everybody kind of has like a team and they follow that team and that's kind of how you get into the sport and it's just like it's a thing right but if you look at something like soccer or football super easy to entry to to actually play um and I feel like that really draws you into the kind of like the, the sport and the fandom. Okay, so next we're going to talk about uh, just like a general rundown of game development. So I think this this kind of middle section is basically where a lot of people don't don't quite grasp how how much happens with game development, and they think it's just super easy. So we'll kind of tie into the last point, and that was like ease of entry. So if you have less people who are into the sport and less people buying your game, that means you're going to make less money. If you make less money, that means you have a smaller budget. If you have a smaller budget, it means you have less people to work on the game. And then if you have less people to work on the game, it means you have less resources. So from someone who worked at EA, I've worked there. Um, I've been a game changer since NHL 15. Um, I, I have a pretty good understanding of it. I don't know exact numbers of like how big the team is, but I'll give you like a really good example. Generally, the NHL EA Sports team is, I would say at least a third. I, again, I don't know exact numbers. It's been a while since I worked there. It's been a couple of years. And this is just me like spitballing numbers. I could be wrong, uh, but I feel like the NHL team is at least a third of the size of FIFA or Madden. Now... They could be even smaller. I'm not even sure. They could be a quarter of the size because I know FIFA has teams kind of like all over the world. And Madden also has a team uh, at Redwood Shores in the US. And I feel like that's a pretty big team as well. So generally, because NHL sells less copies, and it's similar to a UFC, it's such a niche sport, um, they have just much smaller teams. And actually, NHL and UFC share resources at some points. Uh, like they share developers that work on the features. 
Um, but for example, let's say FIFA and Madden have like four to 500 people, maybe. I don't like, again, I'm spitballing numbers. I would say NHL probably has 120 to 150, um, which is a lot smaller than the other games. And I think the, the misconception, and we'll get into it with the community portion, is just that everybody can do everything. So if you have 120 people, we're just gonna use this as the example. If you have 120 people, let's say 20 of those people work in marketing, they work in partnerships, they work in legal, they could be graphic designers. And those are like separate people from the actual game itself. And then when you look at, let's say, so you take 120, you, got, you subtract 20. So let's say you have 100 people now, so you, you have a team that works on gameplay, you have a team that works on franchise and be a pro, you have a team that works on hockey ultimate team. Uh, there is also a team that works on like art. So that's like jerseys and like all that kind of stuff that actually makes it into the game. Then you have a security team. Uh, there's also an analytics team. Which, all right. And then last but not least, I totally forgot these guys, the QA team. So there's people who test the game um, and they're just quality assurance people. And those are all within your 100 people that work on the actual game itself. So to break that down even further, let's say you have 15 to 20 people solely on gameplay. Again, these numbers are just hypothetical. I don't actually know who, how many numbers they have. Uh, so if you have 15 to 20 people that work on gameplay, uh, let's say your big feature is that you want to revamp goalies, okay? So let's say that probably takes 10 people. Let's just guess 10 people, which leaves you with 5 to 10 people to work on everything else, right? So we're talking... If they need to update puck pickup, they need to look at how shooting mechanics work, skating mechanics, puck physics, uh, just generally any kind of gameplay bugs that are kind of like on the priority list, uh, even from the previous game. There is that many people that have to work on all that stuff, and there's only 15 to 20 of them. So I think one of the big misconceptions from the community is that when uh, the EA Sports NHL tweet out something for Hockey Ultimate Team, and that's like their big, that's like probably their big money maker, right? Because, like, obviously you got to buy the game, but then they don't have anything else that's monetized. Uh, so the only way they really make money beyond game sales is on Hockey Ultimate Team. So when they tweet out something every day and they're like, hey, we have a new event. And people jump on the Twitter and say, hey, fix your game. Or like, hey, why are you putting out Hockey Ultimate Team content when we want gameplay updates? You have to kind of take a step back and say, cool, but like, do the people who make and like implement the jerseys and the, the people who do art can those people actually do gameplay stuff probably not are the people who do security and like the people who like work on hockey with the team are they the same developers no they're not can the qa people do it no <laughs> when you kind of look at it everybody that works at ea is very specialized and there are some people that can cross over like i'm i'm fairly certain that there's developers that could work on say a franchise or be a pro and they could probably go and work on gameplay if they needed to um, and then vice versa. Like I'm sure there's some people within those teams because not everybody does everything the same. Um, everybody's got specific roles. Um, there's just there's not so much overlap that people can just go wherever they want, do whatever they want, right? So there's there's very specialized people who do specialized things. And when, <laughs> whenever I see those comments, I don't even look at the EA comments anymore on Twitter and stuff, just because like. I just I just think there's just a lack of understanding. So that's that's basically game development and like the team as a whole and like how not everybody can do everything and there's only an infinite amount of resources. So when I talked about hockey as a sport and like sales, um, people buy hockey less and buy the NHL game less because it's not FIFA and it's not Madden. And those are I wouldn't say Madden's quite a worldwide sport, but FIFA is definitely a worldwide sport. And like I've seen numbers while I work there and like there is a very, very big difference between sales. <laughs> um, so generally, when you're an executive um, or someone that has to set a budget, basically you want to look at your ROI. You know, if if you're not selling the game and you're only getting so many sales, that means that you're only going to get a fraction of the team because you only get a smaller budget, right? If you have a smaller budget, you can only employ so many people to actually work on the game. Um, so when people say stuff about you know, whatever, again, going back to, hey, work on gameplay, I, you know, if, if, and like people yelling at Rammer, I th Rammer's moved up a bit and he doesn't do as much of the, you know, personable stuff anymore. But like, if Rammer could hire more people for his game, he absolutely would. Um, and I can tell you generally, everybody who works on the game and the franchise is very passionate about hockey. They might not have backgrounds in hockey, but they are very passionate about hockey. 
and they want to deliver the best product that they can. So because they sell less and they have less resources means they have less to work with. They really try their best to do as much as they can to put into the game. And it's not like they're not trying because they are, they, they really do. Like I was there towards the end of NHL 17. Um, but like I was there for most of the development of NHL 18. All right, I'm trying to angle this properly, but this is like the plaque you get for working on the game. So like everybody gets one of these um once you're like completed the game uh so working on nhl like before the game like launches like actually comes out everybody on the team um are like they're there like not i wouldn't say 24 7 but like they put in long long hours trying to get the the game to the finish line and get like the product finalized so it can go out and be sold and be like a complete game and like have no bugs and all that kind of stuff Kind of like a, a smaller portion of that is just thinking about how long the development window is. So when you look at the development window, you think, hey, the game comes out every 12 months. So they're working on the game 12 months straight. And that's not exactly how it works. Um, when you're playing the game early on and you see updates or like you see roster uh, roster changes, um, those are other like those are people that are within that team that have to do that work, right? So when the game releases and people find an exploit goal or like there's just a constant bug that's happening that maybe they never caught with the QA or like the game changers, that is like something that people from that 120 that we theorize are actually working on during that period. So like, even though let's say the game comes out right here, you know, you have your team work until the deadline, but there's some people that continue working after to like make sure things are, you know, finished, their bugs are fixed, you know, or if they're, they have like a plan for DLC features, like uh, like a roster sharing, those people are working past that deadline. And like some people start working on the next game, but it's not the whole team, right? Like you only have so many people working on it. Um, so most of the features I think, like let's say the big feature was roster sharing, that's in December. So you have people working on that until then, right? Um, and then those people eventually, once they're done some of the main additional features and like fixing bugs, then they get to go on to the next game. So there's like, there's this big overlap of teams and like people doing stuff. Um, and I think there's just like a misconception that you have 120 people and they're working, you know, whenever the game comes out October 13th or 14th or whatever, and they're working all year until the next October 14th, right? That's not, that's just not how it works. So, and again, it's been, it's been a while since I've seen like a development calendar and like, where we can't really share that, but just, just to give you like a, an idea, like it's not 12 months. You know and to think that somebody's working 12 months on the next title is just not not realistic all right so hopefully hopefully you have a understanding of game like just a slight understanding of game development and how kind of things work um not everybody has the same amount in their team the team as a whole is not up to rammer it's up to executives who see sales and they say here's your budget for the year you can employ more people if you have the budget to do so or you have to cut people because you didn't quite make your budget at the end of the day the more people that buy the game and the more people that put money into hockey ultimate team that's kind of like the bottom line and that's how they get more people to work on the game so when you compare a fifa or a madden to an nhl that's why they have so many more people because they sell more games and that kind of ties into you know the sport itself so the next portion of like kind of what's wrong with ea and i wouldn't say I mean, it can be a negative. Um, if you, it depends on your your point of view. I'm a very neutral person, and I like to see both sides. And I've seen the game from a consumer, like you know, when I was younger, uh, I've seen the game as a content creator. I think I've been making content since 2012. I've seen the game from a game changer perspective, and I've seen the game like working there. Like I worked there for about a year and a half on a contract, so um, I've I, I've seen you know, the different perspectives. So generally the community, it comes off as very negative. Um, and there's a lot of people that I guess you could say, so to speak, complain about the game. Um, and that, that is very true, but I would say at the base of it, it's not really complaints and I'm not going to like put a negative spin on it. I'm going to try and be as positive as possible, but the community is just very passionate. You know, there's a passion there, uh, for the game and they they really want to see the most out of it in general though. Like, every gaming community is so passionate and i'll give you some examples right now all right so we're gonna start with my nhl 23 news video uh which was just more speculative about like you know release date who could be the cover and like i had a theory about when they were gonna release which they didn't whatever that's fine um 
but you can see like right off the bat that there's a lot of passion here like just through the comments like i wish they would up the overall presentation i really like the gameplay of 22 with good realistic sliders okay cool sweet everything needs to be better graphics all around equipment da, 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 da. yeah makes sense more cost like the, like people want a lot of stuff out of the game right more customization jersey stadiums goal equipment and like even even down to this like can't believe people even care for this game anymore hot, hot trash totally get it people like reference other games because they're like man look at fifa like fifa is so great or like look at madden look what madden's done but the the funny thing when you nail it down to like the passion is like you when you when you kind of like drill into that passion of the fan base so like let's so we're gonna go to fifa 22 uh official gameplay trailer that came out last year look at the first comment fifa never disappoints us when it comes to disappointing us <laughs> whenever a new fifa game comes out better ai better physics better graphics that look two percent better than the old game ea board members let's add a lot of camera shaking in this new fifa edition and nothing else so like and, and this goes on and on and on these are passionate people who are passionate about the game and they want to see more right like everybody wants more they want more out of the game so if that's something like gm connected they they really are going to push for that and push for that and push for that but i think there needs to be the understanding of how game development works because people just expect things but they don't realize the work and stuff that goes into it and let, we'll go back to the game development so let's say like we said we broke it down there's 100 people that work on the game not everybody is an actual developer not everybody can code there's lots of people that do testing and artwork and stuff like that but let's say you want gm connected right and like even i even like i didn't even mention like a network team i'm sure there's people that work on like the, the network and connection uh stuff if you were to take everybody who works on franchise and be a pro put them on gm connected and you took everybody from gameplay and put them on gm connected what does that look like so cool you might have gm connected as a feature you have added zero gameplay stuff you haven't worked on any bugs and if you look at be a pro and franchise sweet you've you've added gm connected but the franchise people don't get anything other than gm connected which would look exactly the same probably as what the offline version looks like uh and the be a pro people also don't get nothing because those people were also working on gm connected so if you took you know your 100 people and you put 40 people to try and work on gm connected you don't get any other gameplay franchise or be a pro features and that's not to say maybe hut also like it depends how big of a scope the, the the feature is and that might mean like even some hut people might even be working on it right so to say it's just an easy feature to implement means that we probably wouldn't get much of anything right and in a good example i guess just to like and i'm sure i can talk about this it's probably not a big deal uh, but when I was working on NHL 18, they that's when they started talking about Frostbite. And they actually made a Frostbite team to work on the next game. Uh, like, to, to work on implementing Frostbite into NHL. We didn't see Frostbite until NHL 22, okay? So that's at least four years, three to four years, that people were working on Frostbite to get it implemented. Those people weren't working on all the other stuff that we're working on. But let's just say you want to try and implement something like GM Connected. If they haven't had a chance to start working on it, they're probably going to take a few years to work on it just because there are so few resources and so few people that if they want to actually release a game that has new features, um, it can't just be one feature. Nobody's going to buy that, right? For example, I do love Franchise. I wasn't the biggest fan of GM Connected. I thought it was very slow and sluggish and very clunky. Um, and I think a lot of people had that similar feeling. Uh, I know Madden had a pretty good connected franchise, so maybe it would be kind of like that. Um, a little bit speedier and stuff. When I'm playing with my buddies and stuff, we're playing World of Chell, we're playing ESHL games, uh, like club games. So if they were to not put any features or anything into World of Chell, do you think people who predominantly are like eSport players, I mean, those people probably are different. They probably would buy the game anyways, just to have the newer version and like some of the updates. But a lot of the casual people might be like, I don't want GM connected. Why would I want to buy that? Right. So I think there's just like a huge misconception and don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that complain, but in general, from the community standpoint, I think people just need to take a step back and look at a bigger picture. Obviously, if you don't know game development and you just buy the game and you're expecting the world, uh, you're not going to get the world. It's not, it's just not a thing that happens. Um, like games take, <laughs> take time to make. And obviously, in general, I think this is probably falling on deaf ears because a lot of people just don't, they don't think about it and they won't care anyway. So I'm probably just, it's like talking to a wall, right? Um, 
even though you have good intentions and I'm trying to explain things thoroughly so people like understand and be like, mm, maybe I shouldn't expect that, you know? Um, and obviously from a game that you buy yearly, you should expect more than what you get. Um, but it, it's difficult. <laughs> it's a very sticky situation. So I guess like this kind of like runs into a conclusion. We're just going to bring everything together. Um, we kind of looked at even uh, like just Grand Theft Auto, how they it took them like eight years or whatever, nine years to make another game. Like that's insane. And you're asking EA to make a yearly title uh, with less than a year of development time. And you're looking for the world, right? Um, so I think I think conclusion like hockey as a sport, very, very small compared to a FIFA or Madden. You got to like just scale it back and think smaller, right? You got to think like down, you got to downside it. Like obviously hockey fans are passionate. The community for the NHL game is very passionate. And that's why they they really like the developers themselves are passionate because they really want to give you that product. But I, th I think people just need to like have lower expectations and take it for what it is. Uh, for me, like I've been playing, I've been playing NHL since NHL 99, like consecutively um i've owned every game since this game nhl uh, 2003 I've, I've literally owned every single game since then um and i can tell you like there's massive features involved every year um are they are they huge are they completely game changing not all the time but like they're big enough that you notice and i notice game development is really not that easy you gotta like really think like you gotta really think about it there's budget there's resources there's scopes if features don't fit into a scope, they're not going to make them because they only have so many people. If there's only one feature on the on the back of the box and it says GM connected, are people who play hot going to buy the game? Be like, eh, I don't really know. Like, obviously, if you're very committed and you're very good, like competitive, you might. But if you're a casual person, you're like, cool. But like, what about hut? Like, I play hut or like, cool, I play be a pro. So like, where's my features or like. Did that mean they didn't do anything to gameplay or like world of chill you know community as i said community is very passionate fan base is very passionate i think i think one one thing like obviously there's a lot of negativity in the community the one thing that people really need to try to do better and this is just me like reaching out to you guys don't just say the game sucks fix your game you know like like try and give specific examples as to what's wrong in your mind that that's wrong with the game right yeah um, that's why i'm a game changer that's why there's other game changers because uh we're we're very civil and like we we work with the devs to like try and fix things um as a game changer we we really don't have a ton of input into features and stuff but we're there to really like test the game tell the devs what's wrong tell them what the community is looking for and like there's there's a ton of other things that go into the game obviously there's like the community aspect uh, and like what are people looking for and then you, there's like there's the part about trying to grow the game so they do a lot of market research um, and that's like a marketing thing where they ask people who might not even play the game what kind of features would interest them because they want to grow the fan base and grow the game so that they can have more resources you know they need to grow the game to, to make more money uh, and then when they make more money, they get more budget and they get more resources and it's just a cycle, right? And then third, like they do rely on the game changers, like pretty, pretty good on like features and stuff like that. Uh, we don't really, I'd say that there's like a list of features that we've been asking about for years. And uh, I think that's just how it is. Like, it, again, it, it all comes down to budget and scope and like how many people they have to work on things. So I think like we understand that, or at least most of the game changers understand that. We've seen, we've seen features implemented like in the last couple of years that we literally asked back in it asked for an, an nhl 15 we're like cool like finally you know um and it's very like it's nice to see it happen but like the devs have just a, like a list of features that they want to try and implement and there's like priorities and there's like bug fixes that need to be done and it's like is this a game breaking bug or is this something that could like go down further you know like there's there's a list of things that they want to do and basically every year they got to prioritize what makes sense and generally what what as a whole the game is trying to achieve like what's the objective of the game you know is it to be faster um is it to be like have more fidelity with controls you know like do we need to add more deeks like they've been slowly adding some deeks but it's not like we re revamped and added 15 deeks right like that's not a thing we see two to three a year maybe 
if we're lucky. So in general, I think the community just needs to like take a step back, look at the bigger picture, just think a little bit more and generally just be more like civil, but also like specific with your feedback. Don't just say the game sucks because that doesn't help anybody. That doesn't answer anybody's questions, you know, like say, hey, there's something like clunky with the skating going on, you know, or like, hey, what's going on with the puck pickups? Like and like send a video if you can, you know, you, you, most people have phones nowadays. Just take a video with your phone and say, look at this puck pickup. Why didn't it work? And you send that to EA and they'll look at it and they'll like put it in their list of things and like look look into it, right? Um, but if you just say, hey, your game sucks, I don't know, <laughs> what's that gonna do? So I'll look at a few things that like I would suggest to EA in general in terms of like improving things. Uh, again, this is not up to me. This is just my opinion. Uh, I've seen it all over the place, but like, uh, a constant living game that just gets updated throughout the year um, so like we're talking like a Warzone or like an Apex Legends a game that's just always on right there's no NHL 22 NHL 23 NHL 24 it's just one game right now the other side of that is like cool maybe we could get a new feature every three to four months but that would also outdate the game engine right so if they wanted to build a new game engine they wouldn't be able to or like work within a new game engine they wouldn't be able to so like if they did that with ignite we probably wouldn't have seen frostbite come uh the second thing is like they have to make money so like obviously the main driver would be hot but like you would probably see some sort of subscription fee involved uh or like a battle pass where they have to make money in order to continue to keep the team alive right and make updates so i th i think just because of that essentially you're we're we're already getting that if you like like i think i think it would be cool to see the the model but i think at the at the other end it's like we already kind of have that you pay 80 dollars for a game that's gonna last you a whole year and then you get another game for 80 dollars and last you a whole year if you don't play hut like that's not bad like you you pay a lot like what is it 11.99 or something for netflix every month you know so that's like over a hundred dollars a year just to like watch tv and movies but like if you're paying 80 dollars for a full year of content and you can just play the game whenever you want like it's similar to netflix it's actually not a bad deal right um my other suggestion potentially and again you got to think about budget and resources and all that kind of stuff if they don't make money it doesn't work but if they had the game every like bi-yearly so we're talking like they went nhl 20 nhl 22 um, if you took all the features from NHL 21 and 22 and put them in one game, that would be massive. There's a huge Via Pro update. I feel like they added a bunch of like pickups and stuff. And then they also put it, you know, and then also if you took NHL 22, which has Frostbite, you know, if you got all that stuff in one year, plus like all the additions that they had, that's a pretty big update for people. I think my, my big suggestion to community, if you don't think that the game is up to snuff for you for that year, don't buy it. Buy it the next year. If you buy it every two years, you're going to see massive updates. Um, if you're like a franchise person, it's probably a big leap for you. If you're someone who is very competitive and likes to play with your buddies, you're probably going to have to buy it on day one or just wait for a sale. You know, there's, there's sales around Christmas, like Boxing Day. The game is pretty much free by June. So that, that still gives you like four months before the next game comes out if you want to test some of the new features and stuff. Um, like if you're not a content creator, you're not a competitive esports player, or like just a person who generally likes to play with their buddies and like have the newest iteration, don't buy the game. You know, I'm not telling you to buy it or don't buy it, but like just think about it more. If you don't think it's the game and like there's not an update in your particular, like if you're a franchise person and you don't see anything for franchise, and you're like, eh, don't buy it, you know? Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, and then I guess this is kind of like a general thing, but like you could look at like a market competitor as a big thing too. Remember EA used to have 2K uh, to compete against. And some people say that those were the best EA NHL games. And like, maybe you're right. I never played 2K. Whenever I saw a 2K trailer, I look, I thought it looked like garbage. The, the, you know, the graphics were polygons. Basically they weren't very smooth. I mean, EA obviously wasn't the smoothest game either. It didn't look perfect, but like, Comparing the two, I always thought that EA looked way better than 2K. I never bought a 2K game because I just like, and like, there's a lot of people that swear by 2K games, and like, that's your opinion. Uh, you know, everyone's entitled to their own. I didn't, I didn't find them appealing. I'm sure there was things in the game that would be awesome to see in EA. If they had a competitor, that would push EA as a business more, right? Like the the executives might look at a competitor 
say, wow, look at these guys, look what they're doing. And they might like give the team more money and more resources to make a better game. I don't know if that's a solution, but you know, if there was a competitor and they're, you know, they were losing their sales, they would have to do something other than, you know, hopefully not close the team down because that would suck. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody to lose their job because a competitor just beat them, which, you know, it happens, but, uh, but generally again, we'll go back to the very first question. How frustrating is it to work at EA or be a game changer and constantly put a lackluster product? I, I mean, I've been playing since NHL 14. I don't think it's a lackluster product. I think that in general, there is, you know, updates every year and more features every year that make the game better and better. Um, I understand why people think that that was like the peak NHL game, and I don't think so. I think a lot of people actually think uh, more recently was like, I think a lot of people really like NHL 22, especially from a competitive standpoint. As, a, as an employee, you're really just trying to give it your all. Uh, as a game changer, so generally game changers, we're kind of more like consultants. Um, we all have our own areas. I'm, I'm more of a, like a generalist. Uh, game changer, but there's people who are like esports players, so they're like more competitive gameplay stuff. There's people who are hot people and like they they want to like contribute and like add more events or like different ways that you know things work. And like for me, I, I look at the big picture, I look at everything, and like I try and input on all the things that are relevant to what I you know my opinions. Um, and like there's obviously game changers that don't agree on opinions. We don't agree with the devs sometimes because. You know the the devs want to do a specific thing and we're like no please don't do that you know there's like a you know but like we're all trying to drive our own community so it's even like if you if you take a step back like the community is very divided about things like i want gm connected or you know we need more in world of shell but like at the base of it the the game changers all have their own objectives as well and the devs have their own objectives so um trying to like come to an even ground is sometimes even difficult within that but we do do a lot to help when the game's like going to come out we uh we we try and get our a lot of input on the game before it's actually released which is which is kind of like nice to be able to do do we have a lot of like input on features not really we try and like like when they tell us the features we try and feedback on that and like give suggestions on like maybe what not to do and what to do um at the end of the day it's up to ea and it's up to their creative people to you know kind of decide which way the game's going um and even though some of us game changers might not be okay with like the direction on some things that's why ea pays people to to come up with those things right like they they're trying to grow the game and like sometimes the features are more casual because they want to bring in more casual people or just like general hockey fans right and like maybe they've never touched the game before right so they're they're trying to like reach casual people who might not have played the game maybe they have friends who are hockey fans that they've never really got into it so there's a lot of things going on that people just don't really understand or like i would say are almost like ignorant to um like you, you some people just don't care they just want what they want and you know that's that's what it is and like uh when i see features i see big updates to things uh you know joe schmo over here might see the feature and be like what that's it you know so I think it's it i think it, it comes down to perspective um and i hope a lot of that makes sense uh again i could be talking to a wall right now and <laughs> either you're listening or you're not listening so uh that's it for me i hope you guys enjoyed bit of a long video um i tried to break it up to be as specific as possible to try and get some better understanding in general i think that's what it comes down to you just got to take a step back and like understand the process and like there's so much more that goes into a game than just like your feature. So uh, I get it. I understand people are very passionate and that's what the community is. Everybody's got their own focus and what they want to see. And that's always going to be a thing. Um, but at the end of the day, if you just say, hey, fix your game or your game sucks, that doesn't help. So <laughs> try it, try it. Like as a community, I'm just asking you to try and try and do better. That's all. I'd love to see people's thoughts on like a subscription versus a yearly versus a buy you know, every two years uh, development cycle. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think. Thank you again for clicking and checking out the video. I really appreciate it. Uh, again, if you have two seconds to hit the, the like button or the subscribe button, it really helps. And uh, yeah, hopefully we see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching guys.